Don't Care podcast. And today we have a special guest in the studio with us, um, Mr. Nafi Manwe Haluendo. Nafi Manne. Nafi Manne. Yeah. You must be respected. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what the name is. Yeah. Put, put, put some respect on yeah, my name. Yeah, put some respect on my name. All right. Um, thank you very much. Um, we, we appreciate that you made the time to okay. actually um, have come on to our podcast. We have so many, so many questions, but again, like, like we said before we started shooting, that it's like a chilled conversation and whatnot. Um, we just want the audience to get to know who Mr. Nafi Mane is. Yeah, yeah uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, <coughs> Nafi Mane is a young Kwanyama guy from um, Oshakati. Um, that's where I grew up. Um, but already I'm from the region. I'm Okatope. I'm, um, I don't like defining what I do. Uh, because I don't like being limited by uh, professionally, I'm a lawyer, um, I'm a musician, I'm a comedian, I'm a humorist, uh, I'm a political activist, I'm a socialist. That in short is what I do. That's good. Um, yeah. Speaking, speaking of, 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 of what you do, um, we just want like a, a, brief, a brief background uh, in terms of where you studied, um, when did you move to Ventuk, um, um, your high school, were you always in Ventuk and which year did you move to Ventuk? Well, my, my journey in Ventuk has actually been the shortest, you know. Um, ordinarily, I grew up in the north, like I said. I, I studied at the Rundu Combined School. It's actually one of the best schools in the north back in the days, until grade 10. And then from grade 10, I moved on to Chumep, where I attended high school at um, Tosha High School. And then I moved to University of Course, which is the University of Namibia, UNAM. Um, I did law there, but I only did my undergraduate at UNAM. And then um, immediately I had to go to work. Um, I started working as a public prosecutor in the office of the prosecutor general. Um, but then at the same time, I had to study and continue my honors, of course. Um, and then ordinarily, <coughs> because UNAM didn't have a long distance yeah. study curricula for, for law, we had to study through UNISA. And then um, when I finished um, UNISA, my LLB with UNISA, and then of course I had to go back to UNAM to do JTC. This is a quick one. Um, I think in between there, have you ever, were you in the force? Yeah, <laughs> my, my time in the force was actually funny because, um, like I said, when I left university, when I left UNAM, um, my first job was as a public prosecutor in the office of the prosecutor general. Okay. Now, it, it was difficult because we, we were being transferred a lot. I, I, I was first employed in Ventuk, and then I think two weeks after I was sent to Shakati. And then I was sent to Rundu, and then I was in Rundu, I think, for about three months, and then I was sent to Chumep. Yeah. So <clears throat> imagine the first, and I was young, I think I was 20, 20 years old, I was the youngest prosecutor at the time. And I, I wanted to study, I wanted to continue my studies. So the nature of the job just made it difficult. So I remember a couple of my friends had gotten employment in the NTF as legal advisors. Yeah. And it's almost impossible to get work in the NTF because you don't see adverts, you know, the jobs are never advertised. So I, I, I had to call this um, general, his name was General Joe, but he's late now. May his soul rest in peace. <clears throat> and every day when I come from court, I remember calling him, General, I want to work, I want to be a legal advisor in the NDF, I want to be a legal advisor. And you know, he'd always just you know, rub me off and say, okay, we'll send your CV, we'll consider it. And I'd send my CV and I was persistent and I was persistent. Then one day he just got tired of me. I remember coming from court and someone just called me and said, no general job is on the right. I said, no, I rushed there with you and I said, yes general. And he asked me one question and he says, why do you want to come to the NDF? Why do you want to come to the NDF so bad? And you know, I, had, I just, at that time, you know, I told him my history. I said, you know, I've always been interested. I come from a family of liberation fighters. And you know, the NDF has always been an interesting place for me. Yeah. And, uh, he, he just bought it, he was like, wow, okay. He's never met someone who's so young, who, you know, who loves being there, who wants to be in the NDF. And that's actually how I ended up in the force. Wait, so you get into the force, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, does this mean you go for military training first, or you as a lawyer, there was a different way to get it? No, no, no. I mean, we. I went for military training. Of course, you went to roll in the, in the mud. Yes, yes, yes. All of that. <laughs> Rolling in the mud, being woken up early in the morning, um, sleeping in the desert, all of that. Yeah, we had to go through all of it. So, um, when you started out uh, in the force, uh, did you start out as a private or you got in there and you got out? No, yeah, that. Um, 
fortunately for us, yeah. I mean, of course, we we had to have some sense of command over troops, so you can't start off, you know, as a private. Mm -hmm. I started off as a lieutenant, okay, uh, and then of course I got promoted to the ranks of full lieutenant mm -hmm. and then eventually captain and then major. Oh, so major was your last rank? Yeah, when I when I retired from the NDF, I had the substantive rank of major. Okay. So now, so now, when when does your music career? You are in the force. When does your music career start happening now? Are you in the force making music, or was this in high school before you joined the force? I was making music when I was in primary school. Actually, when I was thirteen, my first song we had a little song for the education ministry thing. You know those little you know primary school jams. And then I went to high school. I used to freestyle a lot. We used to battle rap. Oh, okay. Yeah, at junior we used to battle rap. We used to have. Um, so what music you do now? Just straight up hip hop. Yeah, not straight up hip hop because music evolves. So you yeah, can't yeah. really just do hip hop. But it's it's hip hop, Afro pop. You know, somehow in that line. Okay. Yeah. So that. so now you start in primary school. But when do you officially now start making your own music where you you can actually put out music for people to listen to? I was actually having a discussion on my way here about that. Music in Namibia is very di difficult. Um, especially when you're pursuing academics and a career because yeah. there's a lot of back chat. People are like, no, you can't be a professional and you do music or you can't be studying, you can't be serious if you're focused on music. And it's true to a large extent because you don't have professional studios here. You know, people are always drinking and smoking at studios so you can't really focus on the music. But um, I juggled music and my books when I was at UNAM and then I juggled it a bit when I was at the PG's office, when I was at the NDF, a little bit. But then I think when I left, I was more free to do music on a full-time basis. Okay. Yeah. So, so now, now you're making music. Um, you, you mentioned something before our interview. You have an album coming out. Yeah, yeah, an album coming out. Yeah. Like, okay. Now, before putting out an album, do you have like existing uh, music videos that you've shot? No. As always, just, no. Hopefully, I can get your podcast guy to shoot my first video. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. also, I see, I see one time because because we're doing research to trying to find out exactly who Nati Mane is. Um, beyond the jokes, which you're gonna later get into. Yeah. Um, I see you drop a video where it's a snippet. You're in studio and you're singing, uh, bitches, bitches, bitches. Like uh, when, when you the bitches. song. Okay. The, the song is it's a happy it's a birthday song. It's like happy birthday, bitch. Yeah. It's a birthday. Nah, that's, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, that's that's a See, you're joke. not you're not afraid of facing backlash. I mean, you know how fem uh, feminists are and women on the internet. Aren't you afraid they're gonna come for you? Yeah. Um, especially you being a Twitter person. Yeah. And well, cancel culture these days. Yeah, cancel culture, but I mean. Um, I don't see the song. I mean, if you listen to one, it's a really nice song. Okay. And if you listen to the song, um, I don't feel that um, the use of the word bitch is used in the sense of a slur. Okay. Um, of course, uh, it's not used as a term of endearment to women either, uh, per se. But I think it's more used. The word itself has, has, has moved beyond what it meant back in the days, unless you expressly use it to insult women. You know, it's, it's sort of like a a social slang, you know, it's like bra, or at least the way I understand it. I mean, of course, I'm open to persuasion, but I, I haven't really, I haven't felt that um, my use of the word on the song, especially if you listen to the song, uh, amounts to a slur or it amounts to um, anything that would suggest badly on, on women. Thank you. Yeah. So when does the when does the album drop? I'm, I'm not too sure. I, I've been I've been pacing myself. I didn't I didn't want to rush myself in terms of the music because I really wanted to enjoy the process itself. I didn't want to do music as if I want to release an album like I'm thirsty to release an album. Yeah. It's more about just doing music and I think I have about 15 15 songs that are done. So if I feel if I drop maybe two or three um, videos and I feel look this body of work amounts to what I feel is sufficient for an album. And, can still tell my story in music terms, then I'll release it. But I mean, I'm, I'm willing to go another five gems, six, seven gems. Then, if I feel that I have songs that really tell a, a, a story in terms of an album, then I'll release it as, as an album. Okay. No, no, yeah. we are ready when we're looking forward to it. Do you have like an official single from the album that you dropped already? I, I've dropped um, a, a song called Push a Die Then, but I've only dropped it on, on social media. I, I still have to give it uh, to the radio stations. Uh, okay. And we're planning on shooting a music video for it as well. Like I said, I've been really pacing myself because I've, I've, I've been doing music for a long time. And I didn't want to rush into things, you know. I want things to go gradually, you know. They say that, you know, slowly is the best, 
is the fastest way to get to where you want to be. So I wanna take my time and you know pace myself and you know really do everything right and not rush into anything. Cool. Yeah. So now that's the, the music, but then there's also this aspect of your life, which is obviously known by everyone who's um, socially active because yeah. you, are, you are out there. Um, then there's this comedy side of you. Yeah. How does this come? Is it only something you do for fun along the, uh, you know, in your free time, or is it something you've ever considered, you know, doing professionally? I've, I've, I've actually never thought of doing it professionally. You know, most of my skits, if you can call them skits, you know, my comedic skits, yeah. I, I think of myself more as a humorist okay. as opposed to a comedian. Um, I like tackling or questioning important social issues with a pint of humor. You know, I'm not really just into making people laugh, for instance. But, you know, I like pointing out certain things um, to make them more palatable, if you, if you can say that, you know. Because Namibians, we generally don't like having certain discussions. Just social things, social things like just borrowing shoes from your friend, like, you know, that culture, what, is, what are the rules? Like, when do you borrow, how do you ask, can you ask in front of someone's girlfriend? You know, things like that, you know, small little things, you know, I like to point those things out with a little pint of humor. So, <clears throat> whether I want to do that professionally, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the correct answer is, I'm not sure. Still a bit undecided. Yeah, yeah. So now, um, obviously, we have this thing where, um, well, it's not it's not a fact, but uh, people assume, you know, when you are a funny guy, you are intellectual, you are educated, and, and whatnot, and then women will more likely find you attractive. So, you being out there, you're a Twitter guy, you have a lot of followers on Twitter, and you know, you make your you know your short clips on the internet, making fun. Yeah. How, how do the DMs look? I'm sure women slide there uh, every once in a while. No comment, no comment. No comment. Yeah, no comment. Are you, are you single? <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> is when, when a man says no comment there, eh? there's a lot to hide. But okay. Oh. Yeah, no comment. Alright, uh, I think Tangeni has a lot of questions more related to, to the work stuff. Um, we'll come back with that after this break. Okay. Okay, so I also just want to touch a bit on current affairs and also just um, relate a bit to what you used to do before, since yeah. you said you're part of the force. Yeah. You know, um, not so long ago, the NDF uh, job requirements came out, like uh, recruitment requirements, and there was like a whole uproar on the whole yeah. HIV statuses, you have to be vaccinated, and the age team. So, were you also subjected to the same requirements when you joined? And what's your take on, on the whole requirement thing? Well, I wasn't subject to the same requirements when I joined. Okay. Well, when I joined, I was just concerned with whether I qualified or not. But I remember that I think three months before I resigned, I, I, I do remember there was a, a letter informing us that we needed to be vaccinated, okay. sort of mandatory vaccination. And I, I, was, I was against that. And I think, of course, I've always wanted to open my own law firm which is why I left the force. Okay. But it was also one of those factors that really made it easier for me to leave, to say, I, I can't stay in an establishment that is forcing me to be vaccinated. Okay. Is, this, is this a COVID vaccine? Yeah, it's a COVID vaccine. Because I remember um, when COVID dropped, or well, not dropped, yeah, but when COVID became a reality to many of us, because we started hearing about it and kind of late. I think you were one of the first people to come out and say you were, um, you had COVID at the time? Yeah, yeah, I think I was, yeah, I was one of the first people. Yeah, because we were still trying to understand what COVID was, um, how we can um, behave around it, how we can live with it. And you were one of the, the first people to, to, to come out and say, no, I, am, um, I have COVID. How did, you, how did you handle COVID at the time? And, you know, with the stigma that came with, because now everyone has a phrase that, ah, no, not, not my name is COVID, there's no way I'm going to be anywhere close to you, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so how are you oh, one thing about me is that I'm, I'm really not a conventional guy. I'm, I'm not in the business of doing things out of fear. You know, I, I always try to you know, stay on the, on the steady. I do things out of conscience and um, everything that I do must be informed by my values. Yeah. So at the time, I wasn't really scared of coming out and saying I've COVID because uh, I always stand by what I believe is right. And it's for the same reason that, for instance, when the vaccines came out, I was still, you know, having my, my human rights stance to say, look, you cannot ostracize people based on their vaccination status. Yeah. As dangerous as the disease may be, and of course there are many dangerous things in the world that are used to ostracize and uh, victimize people. 
but from a human rights perspective, you just can't do that. It's not right. So with that, with that said, are you are you vaccinated? No, no, no I'm not vaccinated. You don't plan on getting vaccinated? No, not anytime soon. Okay, that's good. I mean, um, everyone has, has uh, their own rights, and um, we can now tell also um, that whether you are vaccinated or not, um, that's not going to be the end of you. So many people who are vaccinated, and so many who aren't vaccinated. I think it's, it should be a personal choice of everyone. It's not something that should be enforced. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, and like I said, coming back to, to the force, um, just to answer his question, I, I do think that the, the, the military is a very unique place. So I don't think it's totally correct to say they can't have certain standards in terms of medical conditions. Yeah, for instance, I mean, it would just be irrational for you to want to work in the military and you don't have certain physical attributes, for instance. Or, or, or where you lack certain physical attributes, there must really be a motivation as to where you would fit in in terms of the military structure because ordinarily troops are required to be physically able to do certain things, that just makes sense. So where there are medical requirements, they must really be closely tied to what that soldier or what that troop is required to do. Yeah. Also, um, earlier you, uh, you spoke about um, when you left the force and yeah. to start your own law firm and yeah. everything. So also, um, it has been documented over the years that there's a certain aspect of, of favoritism and nepotism when it comes to promotions in the in the force. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's the case? And what's your comment on that? I think there's there's favoritism and nepotism everywhere. As to whether it has it's there in the force. I mean, I'm a lawyer first and foremost. Yeah. I would not want to make social comments on that. It would really be evidence-based. When I was in the NDF, yeah. I, I was a lawyer in the military courts, and at my peak, shortly before I left, I was presiding over the military courts. So my purview is really evidence-based, yeah. and I, I've, I've done so many boards of inquiries, and I've done so many cases in the military, but I haven't really come across one where the evidence clearly shows nepotism, where the evidence clearly shows favoritism. Of course, the allegations are there, and the allegations could make sense. Even to me, for instance, as an individual, but speaking as a lawyer, I, it would be reckless of me to confirm that th okay. there are such practices in the NDF when I haven't seen anything on paper. Yeah. Fair enough. Also, um, getting back to you starting now your own law firm, yeah. we've got a, a, a lot of brilliant, let me say, uh, black lawyers, yeah? mm -hmm. brilliant black lawyers, the likes of um, Sisa, Kadila, Momo. So I'm sure you draw inspiration from some of them. Mm -hmm. Who do you look up to, or who would you say influenced your decision to start your own law firm? You know, when you mentioned Sisa, yeah. um, I call him Tatena Manje. You know, Tatena Manje started his law firm, I think, two weeks after he. He was admitted as a legal practitioner. Um, I started my law firm, I think, three weeks, three and a half weeks after I got admitted as a legal practitioner. So definitely, he's, he's definitely um, an inspiration. Uh, it goes without saying, during my time at UNAM, we've, we've all looked up to him, his work ethic. If you, look, if you know him and if you speak to colleagues, you understand that he has high work ethic. And of course, there, there, are, there are many lawyers as well, senior lawyers, such as um, the Chief Deputy Chief Justice Petrus Damase, yeah. who has really just inspired us. It's really just the, the work acumen and the, the ethics of, of being a lawyer. There are a lot of lawyers who are, for instance, affluent, who have money, but they, that alone doesn't really draw inspiration for young people. Because as a young person myself, I, I want to push myself to the furthest limits and I want to leave an impact, I want to make a change in people's lives. And you know, it's a senior lawyer such as Tatiana Manje and uh, Deputy Chief Justice Damas and who really inspire and have been inspiring us since our UNAM days. So Nafi, yeah. um, you, you're speaking about now you opening up your law firm. Yeah. Um, as a young black man, as someone who's a representative of the youth, um, it's, it's obviously something people can look up to and mm -hmm. say, look, if this man can do it, I as a young black man from the north, you know, Shakati or whatever, I can yeah. do the same. Yeah. So this now becomes a business also. So how, how does that now, um, what's, what's it like to change, you know, you move from having your full-time job 
um, working in the force to now owning your own own practice and also running a business at the same time. How's the transition and how are you dealing with that? Well, I can tell you, it's not easy. Um, um, you know, today's a Sunday, I'm coming from the office. You come here, you, you know, you do an interview, you go back to the office. So, I've always been a hard-working civil servant, but now it's multiplied because you have so many responsibilities, and I'm not talking about the people you employ. I'm talking about the matters that you take on. I mean, if you're a serious lawyer, you need to take those matters on seriously. Your client's matter is a serious matter to you, so it should bother you. You should be looking for ways to assist your client over the weekend, after five. That's not ordinarily the case when, when we were in the civil service. So the responsibility is just you know, tripled. That's the first thing. But it comes with an unexplainable amount of freedom, like I said. Whereas, for instance, in the army or at the PG's office or whichever government institution you are in, people can tell you, for instance, and say, you can't do music or you can't do what, you can't do what. It might not be direct, but you get a sense of limitations placed on you. you know, when you're self-employed, you are free to be who you want to be. So um, it's a very liberating thing. At the same time, it's very stressful because there's a lot of hard work involved and there's a lot of emotions because you are dealing with people's issues and you need to take them seriously, which I do. But um, when, when you balance that out with the passion for helping people and really the liberation, the freedom that it comes with that, today I can decide if there's someone who really wants my help in Korihas, I can decide that I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to drive to Korihas, I'm going to spend the week there and see how best I can help this person. Cool. Yeah. So now, you see, you, you, you speak about um, to deal with the stress and whatever yes. um, and it's it's a common thing for for a lot of us how do you now deal with with the pressure of, of you know not wanting to fail and wanting to make it and dealing with the stress just within the, the office and beyond that uh, I, I, my stress is never really not wanting to fail i i, I have no problem failing yeah. mm -hmm. i think basically because i failed you know i'm 31 years old i failed a lot throughout my my career so there's no fear anymore of failure i think the fear is of not living up to my potential, of not doing everything. So if I do everything that I want to do, all the God-given talents that are in me, whether it's humor, music, law, whatever it is, politics, if I express myself as honestly as I can express myself, yeah. even if I fail, I'll, you know, I'll be happy yeah. because I know, you know, maybe that's what the universe wants. All right. Yeah. We'll come back again after the short break. So yes, going back to your law firm, so you open up a law firm and something we want to do with the podcast um, is help out people who are running big businesses. Um, so how, how, do, how do clients um, approach you, how do they come to you and also, um, again, I'm not sure how it really works in, 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 in the law industry if you have specialists, you only deal with, with marriage cases or you deal with criminal cases, which cases do you take on as for your business and how can people reach you um, um, when they need any assistance? Now, well, for, for my business, we, we have a website running, Nafimani Harwendo Legal. If you just Google Nafimani Harwendo Legal Practitioners, one, the website will pop up, and if you click on the website, you will see all the cases that we deal with. We deal with civil matters, criminal matters, human rights violations, um, labor matters. It's a, it's a large list of um, the matters that we deal with. It's on our website. So our contact details are also on the website. You can contact us, um, you can send us an email on the website, it will be diverted directly to my personal email. And we, we also have a Facebook and Instagram and a Twitter page coming up soon. I think it should be up in the next two days or three days. So yeah, we're, we're really um, trying to make sure that anyone who's looking for assistance can get access to us through social media or alternatively Google. Right, we'll put all the links in the description of the video, so whoever is out there watching this video can always just reach out to me like money for legal advice. Okay. Also speaking of legal advice, maybe while we are here at the Daily Business Course, you know what I've noticed with people who do podcasts here? Yeah. You, at some point, there's always people who are going to come after you because you didn't use the terms of allegedly or you, you yeah. misspoke. <laughs> Going forward, how do we how do we protect ourselves as people who want to really speak about things that the, the public will get to see, you know, um, current events, things that are happening into the world that matter to us and to other fellow human beings. Well, to be honest and be frank, okay. and, and and be reasonable in the way you 
speak on issues. Look, defamation is not just about saying something unpleasurable or something that someone does not agree with. It's actually about being malicious. Yeah, so provided what you're saying is truthful, yeah. it's reasonable, and you also need to be informed. Well, we speak the truth here. Yeah. That's yeah. why yeah. Uh, so the name of the podcast big, big. is has no cap because we don't tell you any lies. <laughs> we always try to speak about factual things and we want to deal with the facts. Yeah. So if you, want, you need to be informed. If you want to say something, make sure that you have the facts to back it up. If the podcast lights go off and you get a letter tomorrow, make sure you can say, look, I was speaking from this perspective. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Yeah, but you must be able to back up what you say. Well, worst case scenario, we'll just reach out to you. Yes, worst case scenario. <laughs> uh, also, um, so I, re- I recently came across uh, came across a post on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just like to congratulate you on the appointment. I think you're part of the UNA alumni. Oh yes, community. yes, yes. So yes. yeah, big ups on that. Thank so you. just uh, a brief explanation of this uh, description on what the uh, UNA alumni committee is all about because they asked uh, a few you know, alumni I'm, I'm one of them okay start with here oh, so okay. I'd like I'd, I'd just like to get a bit more information and just yeah the UNAM alumni is a connection hub you know it really connects people who are at UNAM with the institution its core values what the institution stands for yeah. and then also it helps link people from the university with each other and back to the university you remember, for instance, that when we were at UNAM, and for instance, why you go to UNAM to begin with, there are certain core values about the institution. Maybe it's academic excellence, maybe it's sporting excellence. Yeah. And when people leave, they take some of those values with them. Now, because everyone is busy, we, we don't really connect with each other professionally, that is. And more important, we also never really go back to the institution to make sure that we develop that institution and we increase. If it was academic excellence that we stood for at university you make sure you give back if you're a lawyer and now you're doing well you make sure you go back to the university as well and you want to make sure that the quality of lawyers that are coming from the university are top class how do you do that you do that with the alumni and the exco really is the connecting body that makes sure that those professionals are not lost that those professionals they are interconnected they keep communication with each other they keep communication with the university and they give back to the university as well. Yeah, so that is, that's essentially the, the backdrop of why there is an alumni and essentially what the ex body does. Okay, that's 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 cool. Actually, uh, actually now I have like a clearer picture because... Yeah, I'm it's just really about practice. connecting everyone um, together and back to the university in so far as the core values are concerned. Mm-hmm. Then we, you want to develop those core values. And, and just to give you a, a broader understanding, yeah. you look at the best institutions in the world, Harvard, your Harvard, your Cambridge, be, be they whatever they are, Cornell University, some universities are sporting universities. And you wonder, for instance, how do they form such a large network? Yeah. They have people from all over the world that speak well of the university, that attend university functions, that give back to the university, that give back to the community, where the university is in. So that's the purpose of an alumni. You know, it's to grow the university, to grow the community from which the university is from, and then also then to expand on the core values of the university. Right, yeah. so now now we have um, Nafi who has gone through, you know, most part of his career, or actually now kicking off his career. Yeah. But besides the work part aspect of, it, of your life, what is a day like in Nafi's life on a, on a weekend when you have no work commitment, um, what are you? What are you up to? Are you, are you popping bottles in the clubs? <laughs> Chilling with the boys? No, no. We are, we, our money status is not at that level yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're more um, painting at home. Painting and, yeah, I, 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 I focus on, on discipline. You know, I don't like to do erratic things. By erratic things, I mean I don't like having unscheduled weekends. So, of course, I, I enjoy an occasional glass of wine, like anyone else. But I, I love consistency and discipline. I, I, I work out, I love working out, so I try to work out as consistently as I can, spend some time with family and friends, and really just balance it. So you don't do, you don't do clubbing? No, I, 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 I'll go uh, clubbing once in a while. Once in a while. Where would that be? Um, yeah, I'd have to plead the fifth one. <laughs> <laughs> but suffice to say that um, I'm not really a big fan of 
social clubs. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would not. You would not find me. At, you'd rather be home with your. Yeah. You'd not find me at your social club. Someone, no. Yeah. But I, I like places where I can have a conversation with whoever I'm with. Okay. Yeah. I don't like places with loud music and bang, 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 and bottle. But yeah, I don't. I don't do that. Okay, just uh, coming back to, because um, I've seen quite a, a few of your stuff, especially the TikTok stuff. Yeah. Yeah, funny thing, um, the TikTok video you made the other day, the one of, um, of uh, the Akwanyama, Akwanyama people speaking in riddles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so my mom actually sent me that video. <laughs> and I was like, funny thing is, you're trying to interview this guy on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to find out. When you shoot those uh, skits, is it something that you think about and then maybe you write or you just take the phone and it just starts flowing? Yeah, no, those are very impromptu. Yeah, yeah very impromptu. And I think that's why when you asked me if I considered doing comedy professionally, I said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I know professional work is different from impromptu, I feel this at that time. I know that there's writing involved, yeah. Yeah, but my stuff is very impromptu. You know, I'll be at the house and I'll think of something and I'll record it. So yeah, it's, it's very random, you know, it's very random. Okay, no, that's, that's, that's dope, that's dope to hear. Maybe another Yeah, let's go on a short break and then we'll come back after this. Um, so we, we are, we're coming to the end of our episode today and again, um, we really, really appreciate um, you making the time. I know you're a very busy guy. Um, but for, before <coughs> we let you go, I want to play a, a quick game. It's called Cap or No Cap. Um, so I, I say a sentence um, and then you tell me if it's true, you say no cap. If it's, if it's not true, then you say cap, meaning cap it's a lie. So you, you need to repeat yourself. If it's true, if it's true, and then you say See. no cap. Okay. That's the truth. Okay. If it's if it's a lie, then you say cap. Okay. Yeah. So if I say uh, Navi is a very ugly man, and you you believe oh, you no cap, no cap, no cap. See now you get, you get the game. Okay. Cool. How so many questions are we doing? We're doing ten questions. Okay. I'll do five, and then again you'll do five. Okay. And you have cool. to answer as fast as you can. So you have to think. Again, so uh, no time to think. No okay. time to think. Yeah. 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 So if it's okay. the truth, no cap. Okay. If it's a lie, cap. cap. Yeah. yeah. If I say if I say you stole a billion dollar or what, what then you say cap because you didn't. If you did, then no cap. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, ask me so we share the money. <laughs> but I go. Okay, let's go. You are in a relationship. Cap. Your DMs are full of girls. Cap. You enjoy making fun of dongas. Cap. You miss working for the NDF. No cap. You are busy feathering your studies as we speak. No cap. Uh, the most you spent on alcohol was more than 3k in a night. Cap. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't make less than 70k a month at your local. Oh. On average. No cap. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you had a crush on a senior colleague at your previous job. Um, you, you've had uh, a homosexual person hit on you once or twice? No cap. Um, going to court makes you nervous? No cap. Yeah, that's, right. that's, that's it. You did, that's did it. good. <laughs> okay, then uh, I have um, one question. For, okay, maybe you want yeah, sure. for, for for you guys. Uh -huh. okay, cool. for, for you guys each. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming the same rules apply. So it's if it's. Look at this guy. He's gonna take over our show. Just, just, just run, run, run me through the rules. Fair so, enough. Yeah. No? So okay. if it's the truth, it's it's no cap. No cap. If it's a lie, cap. Cap. Okay. Yeah. Um, you have called a woman a slur before. No cap. Okay. You have stolen money before. No care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's very interesting that you, right. watching your facial reaction. Right. You really cornered us there. Eh? All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was it for today. Um, any last words you have to um, people viewing this, uh, your followers, um, your clients, um, or a message you want to leave out for the young people in, in, who are going to watch this episode? Be authentic, be yourself. 
to your authentic being self. Yeah. All right. Sweet and short. Sweet and short. You heard it from the man. Uh, ladies and gents, thank you again for your time. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the Vavicha TV channel. Uh, leave a like and please the comments. We appreciate the comments. Um, and yeah, don't forget to subscribe. We out. <laughs>